Hello everybody, uh, welcome to Entertainment Partners. Uh, my name is Andrew Yoon, I'm a QA manager here. And uh, uh, before, uh, we, have, uh, we have a lot of things to share tonight, but before we get there, I just want to uh, spend a couple of minutes to talk about uh, uh, who Entertainment Partner is and uh, what we do here. And who is Entertainment Partners? And anybody here heard before you guys came here? about the entertainment partners? You have? Uh, what, did, what did you hear about it? Entertainment partners. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, jobs and review hiring. Okay. Okay. So, all right, let me, let me start with the, uh, giving you an example. So when you go to see the movie theaters and, or when you watch it, dramas on TV, and then you watch them because of, uh, uh, you want to watch that uh, a lot of uh, special effect or car chasing scenes or simply just want to watch because of your favorite uh, actors or actresses on TV. But the behind all those great movies and then uh, TV dramas, and there's a lot of people, sometimes 100,000 people, they work very, very hard for the movie's success. And then we, EP, we try to help them so they can do their job better and then more efficiently. And these are the, some of the uh, products that uh, we have and then our uh, customers, they use it every day and night. And then, for example, if you look at the bottom, you see the movie magic. That's for uh, the uh, application for budgeting. The studio, before they start production, they use this application to figure it out and to calculate the budget. And uh, by the way, all these applications are web-based. And then before uh, production workers, they go to work, and then uh, they have to submit the paperwork and the tax information. They use a smart start. And then end of the day or end of the week when they have to submit to their time cards, they use a smart, uh, smart time. And then even studio executives, and then they, whenever they want to oversee the, how, the, how uh, the, the, the production is going, they can use that uh, smart hub to monitor. And uh, our QA team is always support our products so we can put the best products out there. And then, uh, so, so our customers can have the uh, best customer e experience. And then, the years ago, and then all the process and QA, we did the, a lot of portion is manually we done. Now, and then we made a change. So now we're doing a big portion of it. We're doing every big portion with the automation. So how do we do that? Uh, we. Uh, we, collabor uh, we collaborate and then with the other teams to understand uh, what they need, what, uh, what the customers need, and then also integrate and then bring it all together to the common goals. And then once that is defined, we try to automate and then continue to test. Okay, and then uh, in order to do that for the automation, we needed a very powerful tool. That's why, that's why we use that uh, automation tool called the Nexio. It is a very, very powerful tool. And then, uh, because the reason it's very powerful is that uh, uh, even the, the people with a no experience, a little experience in programming, they can learn and then they, they can use it right away. And then if you are very uh, strong background in the development and then automation, we could still use that and then do even more with it. That's how this powerful is. And then this is the uh, kind of uh, where the Nexial is, uh, Next is playing. As you look at it, it's everywhere from, uh, uh, from the architecture, application architecture pers perspective and then end to end. So now I'm going to introduce the mic and then he's uh, our senior director and the chief architect, and then he's gonna go through the, all the demos and then more details about uh, uh, Nexio.
Selenium, uh, the latest, not the four, four is still alpha, but it's the three, five, one, four, whatever that one, it's two something version. And we use Winium. Uh, there is API packages to do the API all in Winium. Um, we support any kind of database that supports JDBC. Right? So you can do database connect, connecting these stuff. Also, it, connect, uh, it, it works well with uh, Jenkins. Uh, and we are um, expanding into other areas uh, on reporting, such as Jira and Confluence and things like that. Um, also, it has uh, a, a bunch of uh, functionality that, that, uh, that are related to cloud. Right? So you can uh, upload or download or um, uh, do things with like S3 uh, with um, message queue on the cloud, things like that. right? Um, so, so as we keep adding more features, the benefit will be that whoever is using the Excel on, on the, the left side of, uh, of Nexio uh, will continue to benefit from all these features. As we add new features, like let's say we add the capability to do, say, MongoDB. That capability just comes in for everybody now that's using this Excel spreadsheet. But they don't have to learn the language. They don't, they don't have to really have to learn the API. They do have to learn JSON. You can't escape that. S similarly, you have to, you have to know uh, SQL. Right? So we're not going to actually translate a SQL statement for you. You have to write your SQL. But all the other stuff about coding uh, to get a database connection, to run a query, to, to gather results, all those kind of things are basically behind the scenes. And you just have to express that I have a query, I want to get the results. And next we will do that. Right? Or I have a query, or I have an update statement, I want to run this update statement. And next we'll update, I'll run the update statement for you. Okay? So that's a very high level uh, overview. Uh, let me see if I miss anything. And Nexo also has a lot of built-in, um, I call that transformation, I'm not sure if that's the best word, but basically allow you to kind of transform file types from, um, from Excel to CSV to JSON to XML, you can go to you know, other file, file types like that. Um, because in, in what we deal with, a lot of the things that we do are, has a file type or, or file formats that need to be manipulated or need to be uh, examined so you can get the right data, right, things like that. Uh, so this becomes almost kind of like a macro. We can say, give me that file, go to this, you know, make it into that file type, go to this field, grab the data, and they can do that easily with the Excel. Right? So um, in the, let's see, how long was that? Maybe about a year and a half ago now. So we approached EP and, uh, and inquired about whether we can take this uh, uh, platform and uh, open source it. And we got the okay for doing that. So Nexo actually has been open source for about, I don't know, a year and four months or something like that, okay? So if you're interested, you can just search for Google Automation, I'm sorry, Nexo Automation on Google, you should be able to find this. And uh, please feel free to download and give it a try. Um, we have also a growing and improving uh, documentation website. Uh, it's still improving, there's a lot of work to be done, but uh, if, if, you are, if, you have, if you are familiar with automation in any way, uh, this should be pretty easy for you to try it out. Okay. So one of the goals that we have uh, with Nexo, besides just all the features about um, automating with this application, uh, is that we, we want to have a way so that uh, person A's automation script can flow or can integrate uh, easily and seamlessly to person B's automation script. So you can think in terms of team. Maybe I have team A that works on a, some sort of order application. And then I have team B that works on the fulfillment application, the, the downstream version of that. Right? And, and uh, it would be very nice if I can say, run script A for the order application, and then thereafter run script B for the next application downstream from that workflow, and so on and so forth. Right? And so the idea is, if, if we can do something like that, then each team, while they, while they can automate on their own application you know, during their sprints or during their development cycle, at a later time, we could just pull out, right, hence like individual scripts out of that, um, and then do another automation that's more, that's a larger in scope, kind of like an end-to-end -end test, right? Uh, and the ability to do that was, was useful, was important, because then that way we can test not just the uh, functionality or the correctness of one application, but in fact, an entire workflow. 
and putting us in a more customer focused kind of view, right? That we're not just checking to make sure that the application works, but from a customer standpoint, which really is a bunch of applications, that that also works. Okay, so this kind of a dual view, if you will, uh, is another goal of Nexium. Um, and so, you know, um, over here, project A, B, C, D, the different projects, and each of the little boxes are maybe different scripts. Now you can pull out those scripts and create yet another, you know, quote unquote project, pseudo project, and then you can automate them and you can string them in any order you like. You can maybe say, go to test case one, then test case four, then test case three, and so on and so forth. So that way you can automate in other sequence, right? So that's another thing that we are trying to do in Nexio. Um, and the ability to do that is, is um, it's very nice because in Nexio, you could uh, run in such a way that these scripts, they can share data, right? So when, when they automate, the data that is uh, collected or resulted from one script can then be used in the downstream script. Can, can be affecting or can be used by the script that follows. Uh, that gives us the ability to kind of have a, the, the correct startup scripts or startup process, and then all the scripts thereafter can then use that, that data to drive their uh, automation, right? So, um, anyway, so next we also have a lot of reports. We're still creating more reports, uh, but these are some of the ones that we can create. Uh, I'm going to do a demo, and then we'll see some of these things. Um, these reports allow us to see data or results of one execution or results of multiple execution or you know, series of execution. Okay, so let me try to do a demo now. Uh, Actually, before I do the demo, let me just show you what the Excel looks like. So this is the script. Right, let me just make it bigger. Okay, so in this script, um, I'm, my demo is going to be like a product search, uh, first in Craigslist and then in eBay. Just, I, I don't know, I, I don't know why I picked them, but it's just for fun. Um, I, I didn't want to show you an actual EP application, so this is just for security purposes that we're showing this. Uh, anyway, so um, it's, uh, you can kind of look at this, right? So basically, what you want to do here is uh, you have column A and B really just for organization and just for documentation purposes. Activity will be a list of steps that you group together as a sort of like, like a milestone, right? In this case, uh, this activity will consist of all these steps. And then description is exactly like this description. Then each step, you will have a command that you want to execute. So in this case, I'm going to open a URL. Um, and then the URL is this. That is a syntax for a data variable. So that site URL is in a different file, and it looks like this. Uh, let me make it bigger, right? So that's the site URL. So the way Nexo works is that we kept these scripts and the data separately, and that way you can modify the scripts or the data file independently, uh, and therefore you, know, you, you get an opportunity where you can run the same scripts with different data sets, right? Then you can have uh, maybe a, 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 more, a more varied uh, version of your same test. You can widen your, score, uh, your, your coverage, right? Okay, so that's a data variable, so that basically just points to that. Oh, I didn't want to do that, but anyway, you'll go to this side for you. Um, let me go down a little bit here. So, the, uh, so this will be type key, will be, you're trying to type some keys on the locator. This is another data variable, and so is that. Right, so in this case, the data variable would be something like, uh, let's see, input this one right here. So uh, I, I mentioned early on that, that, that Nixio uh, used a Selenium underlying, uh, underlying its code. Uh, so we support all the locator that uh, Selenium supports, uh, XPath, CSS, name, whatever, text, all, all the above, right? So while well, you don't have to code, but you do have to kind of get to learn a few things like that. You have to learn SQL if you have to deal with database. You have to learn uh, XPath if you have to deal with XML or possibly web automation, right? things like that. Uh, but we find that those things are a lot easier or a lot more uh, they're, they're simpler. They're, how do I say? 
they are not as burdensome to learn than an actual programming language, right? You, you, don't, you don't have to deal with IDE and compile and things like that. You don't have the syntactic issues of, or grammatical issue of a language. And so here it's more, it's almost like a little bit more declarative, right? So you just declare that I want to go visit this location and type in this, these text, right? And so that locator is over here, and that's a CSS locator. And then search term would be right here. Search term will be this thing. So that's my search term. So basically, I'm going to go to Craigslist and type in Honda Fits because I'm looking, I'm looking for a car, right, for example. Uh, and then so you can just automate like that, line by line like this. Um, Next also supports conditional. So over here, you can put things like, for example, like this. Right? You can say that I'll proceed if categories, that's a data variable, is not empty. So if, for example, that becomes empty, then this line will not execute. The, the corresponding line, which is that line, will not execute. Right? Um, OK? So this thing does, uh, oh, let me just come down here a little bit. Right, so it's a little hard to read. I, I can't quite expand this because of the Excel and Mac. The font size of that dropdown is not increasing. Uh, but basically, Nexus supports uh, various kinds of um, what we call command types. And the idea there is we just group the different commands into a, a type. Right? So you have web, which is all the web automation stuff. We have RDBMS, which is database. Uh, you have WS for web services, which support REST, SOAP, you know, XML, things like that. Um, there's SSH for remote execution if you need that. There's a thing for desktop, right? And so if one wants to automate a step, let's say web, uh, then he or she will go to web and then pick the appropriate steps for that web automation. So for example, you might go, I want to assert that a text is present and the text may be whatever, whatever text, you, right? Whatever the case may be, like that. And then you go to the next step and so on and so forth, right? The output looks very similar to this. Let me show you an example of that output so you can have an idea. Okay, so this is the output. It looks almost the same as that output. Uh, the only difference is that in this output, we also have the results all the way to the right side, so like here. So here you see uh, some timing information. It's a millisecond. So how long would this step, this step take to execute? In this case, I'm executing the open URL, and it takes about three seconds, and it, it passed. And if it failed, it would have you know, a fail here and, and a message like that. Right? So, um, and we designed this on purpose so that this output looks just like your script. So it's very familiar in terms of format. Right? You can look at that, you can look at that, and then when you go to this, it's, it's a very familiar format. Um, and then we did uh, some basic uh, tally, right? So here are the 39 steps, they all pass. There's a summary in here as well that tells you timing information, statistics, stuff like that. Okay, um, let me see what else I can show. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna run it. There's a lot more stuff I, we can talk to, but uh, I'll just show the demo now. So next to it, or this is running, I'll just talk a little bit about that. Next to supports all the major browsers, uh, the major four. Uh, we was supporting uh, Opera, but since no one is using Opera, so we kind of dropped that. Uh, but putting that back is not difficult, so we might support that again, if there's an interest in, in that uh, at all. Um, now, this thing is going to talk a little bit. You probably can't hear it very well, uh, but I'll, let me explain why we have this feature, right? All right, so. Start search on Honda Fit. Okay, so it says start search on Honda Fit, but anyway, yeah, that, that's uh, nine. So the reason why we have sound is so that the, the automation could be running and you might be doing something else elsewhere, but you can hear a little sound that's going on to kind of give you a prompt, uh, a kind of audio prompt that something is going on. We can do uh, voice, uh, text to, to speech, or we can do MP3, so you can play like a, a bell ring or a bomb or something like that, right? And uh, it's, it's kind of convenient once in a while that uh, the automation is going on, you're talking to somebody else about something else, and then you hear this bomb sound, then you know something broke, and then you can go fix it. So, so it's just a little uh, nicety that we add in there so that you have a little feature that can do stuff like that. 
Um, okay, so now the automation is going on. Uh, this will probably go about five minutes or so. Um, it's going to do a search on cars, and then it's going to search on guitar, and then it's going to go do the same thing on eBay for the same thing. Right? This is Craigslist, and it's going to search eBay. And I'll explain why we have uh, this kind of uh, uh, dual uh, website search. But let me switch back to my script again. So Nix also supports um, uh, the concept of loop or iterations. So the idea with the iteration here is that you could take, so this is, this is my data file. You could take the same data file and just add additional columns this way, right, to the right, and that's how you create iterations. So basically you run the entire scripts or entire uh, worksheet again based on how many scenarios you have in here. Right now, I'm gonna run iteration one to two, so one and two. And so you will use the data here, all these data. And then second iteration, you use the data here. Right? But next, it also has a concept of this thing called fallback to previous, which means that if at any given point in time, if I don't have data existing for my iteration, then you will fall back to the previous iteration. And therefore, you don't have to keep typing and repeating yourself. Right? In, in a lot of cases, such as the locators, they're not changing at all. Right? So I don't have to keep repeating saying this is my locator, this is my locator. I just use the, I just define one time, and the next it will just allow the previous locator to be used in the next iteration. All right, so by doing something like that, now I can do a search for this, Honda Fit in the category called cars and trucks, so on and so forth, and then the next iteration I can search for uh, a, a Fender guitar in this category. Right? Uh, then I can also separate my data by uh, the worksheets, we call that scenario, so in this case, this is the scenario data for Craigslist. And the reason we have Craigslist and eBay is because the Craigslist locator is different than eBay, obviously. So these locators are for Craigslist. If you go to that, these are the ones for eBay. Right? Let me see where it is. Okay, so now I'm in eBay now. Okay, and I'm still doing the Honda Fit, uh, and then after that I'm gonna do, do guitar. So. Uh, we do a little color coding on the console, so as you look at that, you can kind of spot anything that jumps out at you. If, it, if it's a failure, you will get a, a red instead of a green. Right? So it's an easy way to kind of scan up and down and look for things like that. Uh, purple means skip, right? so we have a way of skipping steps based on data. For example, we can say every Tuesday, skip this step. Right? So if it's Tuesday, you will skip a step, and then you get a purple line. Uh, let me talk about... Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, and the data variables, uh, these data variables, um, you can also concatenate, you can chain them together. Right? So the idea is you can create data variable, let's say uh, first name and call it Mike. Then you can have another data variable called name, where it says first name space Liu, and then it will become Mike Liu. Right? So you can kind of Data variable can contain another data variable, and that way you can reuse your data variables. Okay, uh, I'm not I'm not showing in this uh, example here, but we can also create a reusable uh, scripts or steps. We call them macro. Right, so you create in, in an, another file series of steps, and then you can give it a name, then use those steps in your script. So you can reuse the same steps over and over again. Right, very useful for things like uh, you know, like you want to do a checkout or login or logout, things that are repeating fairly frequently in your application, then you can just create them as macros. Okay, uh, I don't know where I am right now. Okay, um, guitar, and uh, I have, looks like I have 43 steps to go. Um, any questions before I show you the output of this thing? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, so yeah, we do support regex. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? If you look at the screen, it's a little yellow flashes. So that's the next way of saying it's at that spot, right? So we put those little features just so that you kind of have an idea where is it going. Otherwise, it may look very static and very kind of uh, like kind of plain. Uh, so those, those yellow flashes, it, it's configurable as well. Um, you can configure it in different colors. So Nexo took this approach, oh, it just finished now. Nexo took this approach of using 
uh, we, we call these system variables. So the idea is that you can turn on and off features by setting these uh, system variables. Right? So for example, um, for example, let me show you something here. So um, in next year we can capture screenshots. I think I show you here. Maybe I didn't. Okay. So to capture screenshot, you will put an X right there, right? So anywhere there's an X, we'll capture the screenshot at at that point in time after that step has been executed. But in next year you can also put a um, a time uh, not time set. You can put a, a caption to that screenshot. That way your screenshot can have a little bit more context. You can say that you know I captured the screenshot for this customer or capture the screenshot at this time in this step, right? But uh, to, to express that you want to capture the screenshot, uh, all you have to do is set up like this, a data variable that says screenshot caption is going to be that, something like this, right? And so let me show you that screenshot now. So it, uh, oops, screenshot. So that's, that's it. This is a screenshot. If you look at it right here, this is the caption. Okay. So and you can change the font size and color and stuff like that. But the idea with this uh, caption is so that this screenshot, if it gets passed around, right, different places in your company, sometimes you need the right context as to what is the screenshot about. So then you can put some description in here. And you can say this screenshot is from this script, from that step, right, regarding this customer, you know, this time, right, things like that. Okay, uh, let me get this out of the way. Uh, let me just show two, two more things and then, and then I can stop or if you have more questions. Um, so next we'll create this um, HTML output. And the idea with this HTML output is to give you a summary of your, of your uh, test, the one I just ran, right? So you can tell that I ran from this machine with this user, here's the time, right? It, it has 138 steps and it took, uh, I guess, three minutes, almost four minutes, oh, no, sorry, six minutes, a little bit more than six minutes, okay? And then here is like a summary of that, right? That I executed how many steps and the timing thereof. So you can look at this and maybe you can use this to compare against previous tests, the same test, and you can see discrepancy and things like that, okay? Uh, there's another way for Nexo to present this as a chart uh, so we can show you uh, historical data over multiple runs. So you can look at the same scripts over multiple runs and you can see you know, if there's any changes in your time or number of steps or pass fail kind of thing, right? Um, I, don't, I don't have that right now, but it looks kind of like, oops, like this one, that one right there. Okay, so that's, this is a capturing of the same test over multiple uh, execution and that rise tells you that something has happened right, uh, between you know, this day and that day. Uh, Nexo also captures uh, browser performance metrics. So this is a very similar to the Chrome uh, DevTools. So that test I just ran with the, uh, with the uh, Craigslist and, and eBay, now we can capture uh, information from the browser in terms of uh, network uh, uh, latency or network uh, time. right? and as well as the browser's time to render the pages. So for example, uh, this one is on the Craigslist, the first one, so that's on, on, uh, on Honda, uh, such as Honda Fit. So there is like a report that shows you that, right? And, and you can kind of follow this along. These are all the, the different steps, right? So, the, so the initially it starts about 800 milliseconds or so, and then jump out to about 1.6 seconds, right? And it sort of stays up there like that. Right. And then you can compare that against, maybe in, in my case, I'm going to compare against uh, this one here. Right. So this is for eBay. So eBay started about 800 milliseconds and then grew up to 1.8 seconds. So this sort of information becomes helpful when you have multiple runs, and then that way you can see where the rise and falls throughout your entire test. Right. So anyway, um, that's it. Any other questions or any? Yes, sir. Yeah, uh, yes. Yeah. 
How many can I run? You can run as many scripts as your machine can allow, I think. We don't have a limit. Yeah. So let me just give a little bit more context there. So Nexo has yet another Excel uh, format called plan, right? In the plan, you would put in the scripts that you want to run, and you, spe you specify no wait for those scripts. So they will all run, not exactly at the same time, but they will not wait for each other. They will run, they will start, and then you start the next one, and so on and so forth like that. Uh, but there's a limit because you know it's a one one machine, so you have some limit at some point. Yes, sir. Uh, why do you guys use Excel as a proprietary format? Can you say that again? Uh, why do you guys use Excel as a proprietary format? Uh, why do we use Excel instead of a proprietary format? Oh, less proprietary, such as JSON. Yeah, we could have used any format. Um, Excel gives us drop down, kind of like autocomplete. It's not really autocomplete. I mean, in truth, Excel is just just to buy time because I, I need a better UI and I don't have the time to write one. Better UI, similar format like the YAML. Yeah. Nexo. So uh, Nexo has a way of caching the Excel so that if the Excel has not changed between execution, you would use the cached version and it will be a lot faster to read that cached version. And that cached version is in JSON. Uh, but in truth, I, I, just, I just don't have the time to write a good UI. <laughs> so Excel is just, I'm just faking it. Right? Sir. I like the fact the way the sound runs at the back end. I try to keep doing the same thing to my test. So the running on one machine makes sure that we at least hear something happening. Um, uh, the screenshots, the highlight, so the yellow highlighting you're doing in JavaScript or, or in another highlight again or uh, as the test execute live. Yes, it is in JavaScript. And we can so be highlighting and doing the unhighlighted. Right, it is in JavaScript. Yeah. And you can control the color. So maybe you have an application that's very pale. You can change it to the dark color highlight. You can also control the timing of how long the highlight should stay. Right? Okay. Yeah. But, uh, those are just settings on your. Yeah. So they all they all look like this, right? You just set it like this. <laughs> so next year means the uh, the learning of two different things together, okay. like science and arts. Yeah. So the nexus of two things. There's no Excel thing in next year. No. <laughs> yeah. I, personally, I'm not. I love Excel. I'm not a fan of Excel, but it, it's it's the one it's one of the few software that we have everywhere. So. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much.